Hello everybody, my name is Steven Marcateros and welcome to an exciting video about Three Mile Island. Before we can get into the melting facts of TMI, we first have to understand a brief concept of what nuclear power actually is. Nuclear fission is the process of splitting the nucleus of the atom into two smaller pieces, while at the same time releasing an incredible amount of heat. Splitting the electrons also releases electrons, which can be released as gamma rays, and other neutrons, which keeps the nuclear chain reaction going. The process of nuclear fission was developed by German scientist Otto Hahn. It was later created into atomic weapons by scientists such as Robert Oppenheimer and Enrico Fermi. The first major use of nuclear fission was the Trinity Test, where fission was used to obliterate Earth for the first time! Then, in a rather solemn decision by President Harry S. Truman, an atomic bomb was decided to be dropped on Hiroshima. The reason that nuclear weapons are so powerful is the intense heat that they create when the reaction occurs. This massive heat creates a humongous pressure differential, which then obliterates anything in the path of the shockwave. When nuclear fission is also used to produce things such as nuclear fusion, the results get, well, per se, amplified. But we're not going to go into nuclear fusion right now. That is an entirely different process, which I don't even understand because I am just a regular American person. So how does any of this relate back to Three Mile Island? Well, when nuclear weapons were being researched, scientists such as Enrico Fermi had this brilliant idea to use it to create heat to power reactors. The first reactor was built by Enrico Fermi himself under the city of Chicago because, you know, it's the best idea to build a nuclear reactor under one of the United States' most populous cities. However, the Chicago pile, as built by Fermi, was actually quite successful, and even though it lacked some of the most basic security features of nuclear reactors, no one was hurt and no one was killed. One world war later, the United States sought to use nuclear power as a way to fuel American households all over the country. The most popular design of nuclear reactors throughout the 1940s and 50s was the pressurized water reactor. This reactor design uses the heat generated from nuclear fission to heat the water, which then turns into steam, which then pushes some turbines, which use magnets and fancy things that I don't really understand since I've never taken physics before, which then creates electricity, and everyone's happy. In 1968, the design for the Three Mile Island Generating Station was approved, and construction was finished in 1974. Back in 1974, the reactor costed a total of about $400 million to create, which in today's money is about $2 billion. The net power output of the Three Mile Island Generating Station was about 870 megawatts. In comparison, the Pleasant Prairie Power Plant in Kenosha, Wisconsin, produces about 1,200 megawatts. However, the cost of the Pleasant Prairie Operating Station, which was built in 1980, also costed around $470 million, which in today's money is slightly more than $2 billion. Take that for what you want it to mean. So, to make a long story short of everything that you need to know to understand the Three Mile Island accident, Now, what exactly was the Three Mile Island accident, and how did it affect the United States? Well, on March 28, 1979, one of the smallest human errors snowballed into the most massive nuclear accident in American history. During a routine maintenance operation, water got into an instrument airline, which then caused pumps to fail nearly 11 hours later. After these pumps failed, the steam turbines then shut down, and the steam turbines provided the process which cooled the water, which went back into the primary loop of the nuclear reactor. Since the reactor had nowhere to send its heated water, it shut down, or scrammed, only moments later. When a nuclear reactor shuts down, the control rods are inserted into the reactor, which should absorb the neutrons and prevent the nuclear chain reaction from happening. However, when these control rods are inserted, they cannot absorb all of the neutrons within the reaction, so the reactor will produce decay heat for quite some time. This actually creates what is known to us as nuclear waste today. To relieve the nuclear reactor of the increasing heat and pressure within the reactor's coolant flow, a valve opened which was supposed to normalize the reactor's pressure to that of what it should normally be. However, when the pressure was stabilized, the valve did not close due to a malfunction. However, it informed engineers that it actually had closed. Engineers at the reactor activated new pumps which brought new water into the system even while the water was escaping. 
Engineers had been confused as why the reactor was losing pressure, but none of them at the time knew that the valve was stuck open. The low pressure with inside the reactor's primary loop caused superheated steam to form. This superheated steam would then increase the pressure of the reactor and further confuse the engineers working at the time. The engineers then shut down this damaged coolant pump, believing that natural circulation would keep the reactor in check. Unfortunately, the steam within the reactor, as well as the stuck open valve, caused the rest of the water within the reactor to evaporate into steam. In the end, the reactor core itself had melted, and some of it had mixed with the coolant flow that was inside the water that was also leaking out of the stuck open valve. Eventually, all of the water that had been flowing outside of the open valve overflowed out of its containment chamber and then seeped through the floor of the reactor's containment building. With radiological detectors around the plant going off and a new set of engineers coming in for their next shift, the valve was eventually closed as the issue was seen. However, the damage that had been done to the Three Mile Island plant could not be repaired. Today, Reactor 2 at Three Mile Island remains closed, almost in the same exact state it had been in the accident in 1979. It has been evaluated that cleaning up the Three Mile Island plant would cost significantly more than the actual construction of the Three Mile Island plant itself. However, Reactor 1 at Three Mile Island still operates to this day and had recently renewed its license to operate for another 20 years. Even though Three Mile Island only released a very small amount of contaminants through the leaked groundwater out of the plant, it had a major effect on the view of nuclear power within America. Combined with the Chernobyl accident 12 years later, nearly all production of new nuclear power plants was halted. The fears brought on by an invisible enemy such as radiation made the public fear it intensely. When citizens are confronted with ways to die, they will most commonly prefer those which they can do to themselves, such as overeating, smoking, or driving. Factors that the public can't control, such as disease, radiation, or terrorism, are significantly highlighted in everyday life. For example, suicide in the United States accounts for nearly 1.5% of all deaths. That means in 2013 alone, nearly 37,000 people died from suicide. Over the course of nuclear power history, only 6,000 people have died, 95% of those being from the Chernobyl accident alone. In conclusion, nuclear power today is overly feared. The events of Three Mile Island misled the public into the actual truths behind nuclear power. Today, many new, safer reactor designs have been proposed, but the public refuses to allow research and spending on something which they fear so greatly. Use of lifters, liquid fluoride thorium reactors, provide a safe, reliable, and cheap way of producing power within the United States. But before the United States can continue on its journey of producing clean and reliable energy domestically, the public must first get over its unnecessary fear of radiation. So, thank you all for watching. My name is Steven Marcateros, and I hope you really enjoyed this video. I recorded this for my AP US History class, and big shout out to you guys right behind the camera there. Uh, got this green screen going, the lights, everything. You, you know the deal if you watch the channel often. If you don't, well, then you think I'm just some crazy guy talking about nuclear power. But I really do hope that you guys enjoyed this, and do not forget to rate, comment, and subscribe, because otherwise, I will see you guys next time.